Perhaps you've heard the expression that rules are made to be broken. Well, in the case of working with area elements in Revit, that's often going to be the case. And the reason for that is, as we've talked about in the previous video at length, the rules that are used to define the boundary lines of the area objects are built into the software and we can't change them. So if you're satisfied with the results the rules give you, great. But if you're not, if the kind of area that you're trying to quantify isn't supported by the rules, then unless you can ignore those rules, you'd kind of be stuck. And it turns out it's very easy to ignore those rules and we've seen how to do it before. But let's review that really quickly right now. So I'm going to zoom in on this top wall right here and this boundary line that's been created automatically based on the rules is going to the inside face of the wall and the inside face of the glass. Let's say that's not what I wanted for whatever reason. Maybe my client wants to calculate the area a little bit differently or maybe the jurisdiction that I'm in with my building uh, has a different standard that needs to be applied here. Whatever the reason might be, I don't like what the rules are giving me. So I want to change it. Well, you can't change this existing line. So simply delete it. Now, of course, the minute I do that, it generates a area not enclosed error, but we can just click anywhere to dismiss that. Okay, now I'll go to the area boundary command and all you need to do is uncheck apply area rules. Now, when that's checked, all Revit will see is the walls. Notice it doesn't see the stairs or the elevators or the columns or anything like that. But as soon as you uncheck that, if you leave pick lines turned on, it turns out that now it would actually see any of the lines in the file. So now you have way more flexibility when using the pick lines option. So let's just say for this example that I wanted the boundary line to go around the outline of these columns here. And then maybe I want it to go to the center line of the wall. Now watch the tag when I do that, that's going to enclose that space. And if you took note of the area before we started, it was 4483 and now it's 4489. So it's a slight difference, but that might be important, okay, for whatever it is we're trying to calculate. So that's a really simple example of ignoring the rules, I'll call it, okay? So you just simply draw your boundary lines where you want them to go. And more importantly, when you uncheck that apply rules, it won't move your boundary lines at all later. So if this wall or these columns change, Revit won't try and change those rules. If you change the area types, Revit won't try and change those boundary lines. It's gonna be left up to you. So you're placing where you want those lines to go based on whatever you're trying to calculate. So let's look at another example. I'm gonna to go to area boundary here and let's say that I wanted to find a mezzanine space here that looks down into this area below. So I'm gonna uncheck apply rules and there's nothing to pick out here, so I'll just draw this with lines, but you could use any of the shapes you want. And I'll just draw this little space out here that kind of encloses a small area like that. Now you'll see that that immediately adjusted the unoccupied space, and we now need an area here, so let's place one, and I'll place it right there. Cancel out of that command, and then I'll select that element, and let's give it a name. All right. So if we keep that selected and we scroll down, let's address the area type next. Now, if you watched the previous video, we talked in detail about area types, how they were built in, how they behave when they're adjacent to one another, and how that affects all the rules. Well, you may also recall that this list is built into the software. We cannot change it, okay? Now, in this case, I've drawn these lines custom. So I'm not really relying on the rules anyway, so maybe I don't really care about the adjacencies of the area types. However, if you deselect that object, notice it's got the same color as this one because those colors currently are being controlled by the area types. Now, it turns out that if we select this and we go to edit scheme, you can actually color by anything you want. So maybe the solution is as simple as create a color scheme based on a different property. Okay, well, before we do that, though, you might notice this little plus sign right here and you go, wait a minute, Paul, I thought you said we couldn't customize this. Couldn't I just click add value and type something in? Yeah, except the problem is when you click OK, Revit slaps your hand. So it's a little devious there, unfortunately, but no, you cannot customize this list at all. All right, so what are we going to do instead? Let's cancel out of here. And the other place that we're using the area type at the moment is down here on the schedules. You may recall that in a previous video, we created a leasing calculation schedule by area type. So what I'm gonna do is right click that and duplicate it. And then I'm gonna right click that duplicate and rename it. And I'll just call this by custom area type. 
and remove copy one from the end of the name. Okay, so that just changes that name slightly. Now notice that we're using the area type for these little subgroupings right here. So what I want to do is customize that list. Maybe I'm trying to follow the 2010 version of the BOMA standard, which has way more area types than are in the original 1996 version. It's got mezzanine types, it's got exterior area types, it's got unexcavated and parking areas and so on. So maybe I want to start including some of those things on the list. Okay, so how would we do that exactly? Well, let's go to the Edit Fields button here. And right there in the middle of the schedule, we're going to click the New Parameter button. And I'm going to give this a name just to keep it clear what we're doing here. I'm going to call that Custom Area Type, but the name is really up to you. But the important thing is make sure that the type of parameter is a text parameter because we want to be able to type in any value that we want. Let's click OK. And then that adds it to the end of the list. Now, I don't really care if it's at the end of the list because I'm going to hide it anyway. What I am going to do is go over to Sorting and Grouping. And instead of sorting the schedule by the area type, I'm going to now sort it by my custom area type. And then under formatting, I'm going to select it and make it a hidden field because I don't want it to appear as its own column in the schedule. I just simply want it to appear as headers in these groupings here. So let's click OK. And now well, that's a little disappointing, right? Because all the headers disappear. Well, the reason for that is quite simple. We haven't applied any values to those headers yet. But as soon as you start to apply those values, this schedule will update itself. So let's select our mezzanine object down here at the bottom. That's the last element that we added. And then I'll click the Highlight and Model button here. And that'll take me to the area plan and highlight the mezzanine. I'll close this box. And now with it selected, notice that over here on the Properties palette, you now have a custom area type property. And you can just click in there because it's a text field and type in anything you want. Now, if you're not able to type in anything you want there, then maybe you left it set to length. You'll have to you know, undo and start again. Okay, so it has to be a text field if you want to be able to type something in. When I do that, okay, what will happen is if we go back to this schedule, it'll now add that mezzanine heading there. Now, we still have a lot of work to do because all of these other items are not grouped, but now you can see that the schedule is doing what we want it to do. So let's go back to the level two area plans rentable and let's go back to the color scheme now. Because at the moment, the color scheme is still looking at the original area type. So let's select it, go to Edit Scheme, and I'll start by duplicating it. So once again, I'll just add the word custom on the end here. Naming is up to you. But notice that now, for the color list, we now have a new entry, okay? Our custom area type property is available on that list. And when you choose it, Revit will warn you that it has to uh, reset all the colors. So that's fine. Let's click OK. And notice at the moment, the only entry is mezzanine. But here's the thing. Remember this little plus sign button here? Well, now that's going to work. Because this is a custom property, it's perfectly happy to let us add custom values. So let's start by adding the values that were on the original area type. Remember those six values? You might still want to use those, right? So let's go ahead and put some of those in. So now I've added all of the six original values, but nice thing about this process is I can now add as many other values as I want. So let's say I'm using the 2010 version of the BOMA standard, and I want to add a few of these other areas to the list as well. So you can add as many values as you want for whatever standard you're following, or even do something completely custom if your office has their own standard. And then when I click OK here, now what I can do is just simply select these area elements and notice that a drop down list has been populated with all of those custom values. So it's really easy for me to now just simply choose those off the list and apply them. So as you can see, if you don't need the rules, or if the rules aren't giving you what you want, you can just simply ignore those rules. But in order to still get a complete solution that includes a grouped and sorted schedule and a nice color-coded area plan, you can simply create a custom text field and use that in place of the area type for all of those custom types that you want to include. And this allows you to create a complete solution that is very similar to the out of the box solution. And the only sacrifice you're making is that when you use the area boundary tool, you just have to forego using the apply area rules checkbox.